Hey everyone, just real quick. So these videos are recorded six, eight months ago at this point. I just haven't gotten around to producing them all and putting them out on YouTube. So uh, hopefully I'm going to get better at this and get the rest of these videos out. As you probably already know, the car is running. Um, so uh, just, you know, watch them for what they're worth. Uh, definitely a lot of information around how I got this thing back together and out on the road. Uh, but it's going to be a little weird from a timing perspective because I'm referencing really old stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's all you need to know. Uh, stay tuned. More videos coming soon. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Geek's Garage. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to work out here, and today was an absolutely gorgeous day, which is going to allow me to get a lot of work done on the engine. Uh, not really sure how far I'm going to get or what I'm going to do today. Uh, basically, at this point, uh, the last video you saw me, I got the uh, exhaust headers on, um, and that was basically it. Um, but I was able to take advantage of some warm weather a couple weeks ago, get those on. So with the exhaust headers on, the next big thing is to get the turbos on and get all the different random engine mount brackets and things on here as well. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. I got a whole day to do this. Um, so we're going to see what I can do. My big goal is to actually empty this bin um, of a whole bunch of parts because that means I'm starting to eliminate bins of parts. This is my goal. So we're going to see whether or not I can eliminate all the parts that are in this bin right here um, and get them all mounted to the engine because if I can, that means we're doing pretty good. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first random part we're going to put on is the camshaft uh, position sensor. And just something to be aware of, when you put it on, you need to make sure that the little divot is lined up with the other divot. Uh, based on everything that I could read um, on the forums, that was the best way to put it in. So that's the way that we're going to be making sure we install this here. Hey, it's me from the future. I just finished going through and plumbing up all the oil and coolant lines on the turbos. And what I'm about to do here is wrong because if you put these on before you go ahead and plumb the oil lines and the coolant lines, at least for the turbo on the rear, you're gonna have to undo all of this and redo it. So, the video is just going to go ahead and I'm going to do all the, the uh, work here. But if you're following along um, and you see this part, don't do what I'm about to do because you need to hook up your oil lines, uh, both your feed oil line and your return oil line, as well as your coolant lines at a minimum on the turbo that's on the rear or you're not going to be able to um, get them on later once it's all mounted up.
And there we go. That was a very successful day. Um, here's that bin I talked about at the beginning of the video that I wanted to empty. The bin is empty. This is super terrific. Um, I gotta find a place to put the bin now, uh, but that's okay. That's a good problem to have. It means a ton of parts are on here. So um, where are we at? Well, basically all the brackets are on here. Uh, the turbos are on. We're gonna find out soon whether or not that was a good idea. Um, and here's what I mean by that. Um, next, I am probably going to be fishing some of the oil lines for this. And hold that thought. Because I spun a bearing, um, I decided I wanted to replace all of the oil lines um, in this uh, engine. Just to make sure I don't pick anything up. Um, once the engine's running again and do some more damage. So um, after a lot of searching around, what I ended up finding was this. It is a Mamba um, oil and coolant line setup. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install this for the oil lines for the turbos. Um, it also comes with coolant lines, but I'm not going to use those because I sent the water housing out to 3SX and got their um, uh, water housing uh, overhaul done on it, uh, which gives you these really nice braided lines for the cooling lines to go to the turbo. So um, I'm going to be using these and this, plus that other Mamba set um, to kind of plumb up all of the turbos and we're gonna see how that goes I'm hoping that I can get to everything I need to um, as far as being able to tighten down banjo bolts and whatnot but stay tuned <laughs> we're gonna see how that goes So I've run into a problem, um, and basically I can't get the bolt that attaches the um, oil return line from, uh, let's see, this would be the front turbo, um, in because this whole bracket is in the way. So I'm going to have to remove this bracket again um, in order to be able to get into this spot and get the bolt in to attach the oil return line. Um, one of the other things you'll notice is that I'm actually using the OEM, our original uh, turbo oil return lines. The ones that came with the Mamba kit just won't fit, at least not on the front turbo. Um, you could probably make it work on the back, but on the front they absolutely do not work. There's no way to do it. So um, for now, I'm gonna see if I can hopefully get in there and pull this off without having to take the entire turbo assembly off again. Um, but who knows, maybe I'm gonna have to take the turbo assembly off again, let's find out. Thank you. 
All right, so that's going to do it for another uh, episode of A Geek's Garage. Uh, the turbos are on, and the turbos are plumbed up, uh, basically. Um, they have a mixture of different parts that I'm using to do this. Um, again, uh, the as I went through it, you probably saw uh, that Mamba kit that's sold on eBay. Um, kind of a mixed bag uh, with that. The oil feed returns from the uh, turbos would not work. Uh, I mean, I could have made the one on the front work. The one on the back most definitely would not work. So luckily I still had all the parts from that, uh, got them out of the uh, cleaner and they were nice and clean so I felt comfortable putting them in. I did use the feed lines though from the Mamba kit uh, just to make sure because I really don't have a good way of cleaning them out. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, you know I don't push any bad uh, junk through uh, the engine as I'm uh, starting this thing back up sometime soon. Um, the water lines, uh, those worked out perfectly fine. Those are from uh, 3SX. They'll be part of the uh, the water housing that I put on uh, probably in the next episode. Uh, those worked exactly the way I thought they would. Um, so those ones, no issues there. Um, so with that, uh, as always, be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, I did uh, create an Instagram channel uh, or Instagram uh whatever. Uh, so if you want to follow there, I'm putting some pictures and stuff of the work that I'm doing uh, along the way. Um, and it's a good way to sort of catch up and see what's eventually going to make it into the videos. Uh, so feel free to follow me there. Uh, same with Twitter. Um, Twitter account, same thing. Put some pictures up there uh, as I go through and get some work done on this thing. So uh, if you really want to see where the video or what my progress is like and uh, there's no videos going up, go check those pages. Uh, because there's going to be more information there. Uh, with that, please keep all the comments coming. Uh, good luck to everybody who's following along and using this as a guide to help them with their engines. Um, just a reminder, I'm not a mechanic. I'm making this up as I go along, and hopefully it's all going to work. So uh, good luck to all those people out there that are following me and uh, trying to do the same thing with their engine. And with that, till next time, see ya.